This is Subaru's first ever all-electric vehicle, the Solterra, and today we're going to be taking a quick walk around this pre-production prototype before it launches here in Australia in the first half of 2023. So we're going to be checking out its design, talking about its charging characteristics, getting inside the car and giving you our thoughts on this early example of the Solterra, which shares a platform with the forthcoming Toyota BZ4X. That vehicle sits on the ETNGA platform. This car sits on Subaru's version of that, the ESGP platform. But in the design department, Subaru has obviously gone to great lengths to try and differentiate this car a little bit from that BZ4X. You can see that in the headlights, here in this sort of not a grill, but design detail like a grill. And then you come around a little bit here and the cladding is subtly different from the Toyota version. And I actually think the Subaru carries it off really well. This color here is Harbor Mist Gray Pearl, and it has a little bit of a blue fleck that's really accentuated by the beautiful lighting inside this studio today. And yeah, I think the design is actually pretty cool. It brings Subaru into the new age, but you can let me know your thoughts down below. And of course, before we get into how this car charges, I'd love it if you could hit subscribe to Chasing Cars if you haven't done so already. So what is the Solterra arrival for? Well, its pricing is yet to be locked in, but it's probably likely to start between $65,000 to $75,000 when it goes on sale in Australia. It's also about the same size as a Kia EV6 at just under 4.7 meters long, riding on a 2.85 meter wheelbase. So it's sort of forester sized outside, but with a longer wheelbase. And that's a trend we see in a lot of EVs to maximize interior space. Now let's talk about the battery of this car because it's a 71.4 kilowatt our usable lithium ion battery or 75 kilowatt hours gross. Now WLTP figures have not been finalized yet. However, the range claim is about 400 kilometers, which isn't too bad, but is some way off the best in class. For example, the Tesla Model Y long range, which will go on sale in Australia shortly, offers a little bit more range and a bit more power. Speaking of power, this all-wheel drive model is the one that we're expecting to get here in Australia. Now there is a two-wheel drive model that develops only 150 kilowatts, but this all-wheel drive just seems like the right fit for our market, especially given Subaru's history producing symmetrical all-wheel drive vehicles. It produces 160 kilowatts of power and 336 newton meters of torque. Pretty decent outputs and enough to see this vehicle, which weighs just a bit over two tons, get to 100 k's an hour in about 7.7 seconds. But again, we'll get to test that all in the future. Now let's talk about charging on the Solterra. We'll pop open this flap. We have these really nicely damped little covers that open the access to the DC fast charging port. This car can maximum fast charge at up to 150 kilowatts, meaning you recuperate 10 to 80% of charge in about 32 minutes. Not too bad. The actual slight issue with the Solterra, at least reading on specs on paper, is the fact that its AC charging rate is limited to 6.6 .6 kilowatts. That means overnight at a home wall box, it's going to take 12 and a half hours or so to get from zero to 100% charge. Now that is a little slower than more expensive and slightly more futuristic EVs, for example, the Porsche Taycan and Audi e-tron, both of which can take 22 kilowatt AC charging. But of course, we'll see how that affects the ownership proposition of this car next year when this vehicle launches in Australia. You'll probably notice straight away that I'm sitting on the wrong side of this car. And that's because this is a pre-pre-production example. There are a couple of things in the touch screens and the infotainment systems that are a long way from being finished and getting their full on Subaru skin. There are a couple of Toyota little telltale signs in here, but I'm told they'll all be fixed before this car goes on sale early next year or in the first half of next year, I should say. Now in here, it does feel very different from a Subaru product from the past. There's a real focus on being a little bit different, a little bit daring. And I think Think that should be rewarded. Subaru has moved away from its portrait-oriented touchscreen here for a 12.3-inch landscape unit, and you've got this funky steering wheel. And now it's expected for us here in Australia that we're going to get a standard round steering wheel, though in North American markets, you will be able to option the controversial yoke steering wheel if you want. So you can let me know in the comment section whether that's something you'd like to see here in Australia. But then we come to the materials, which are all really lovely in here. And it's something that's definitely taken a step up from Subaru products on sale right now. This really lovely carpet up here on the passenger dashboard, it feels just a little bit different, a little bit eco, kind of more like a lounge room. And I think that's gonna be something that's really gonna define EV experiences as we move forward into the future. 
We've also got this lovely panoramic glass sunroof here that's openable, that lets in plenty of light into this cabin, and these seats are quite comfortable. There's also plenty of clever cabin storage here, owing to the fact that you don't have a transmission tunnel to worry about. There's a sort of mezzanine space down here with some USB-C fast charging ports, and then under this armrest you've got plenty of storage, it's nice and soft as well, two more cup holders, and this really clever wireless charging pad that has a sort of sheer um, glass detail on top of it so if you get a notification you may be able to see it just glowing through there and you can ask your passenger to read it and i think that's a really nice touch and the quality in here for a vehicle that is pre-production feels very high and that gives me plenty to get excited about for this car's official launch next year the back seat of the Solterra is very spacious in some ways. For example, behind my own driving position at six foot two, I have heaps of knee room and I have a decent amount of headroom below this double pane sunroof, which is great. However, and this is a problem not only with the Solterra, but with lots of EVs out there on the market, and that is because of the flat floor design, my legs are sort of floating around up here without that much under thigh support. And I think this is really an area where there's a lot of advancement there to be made by manufacturers to make this a truly comfortable place to be for for passengers but still if you're a bit shorter than me it's probably going to be less of an issue and also because this floor is almost 95 percent flat you can fit three people across the solterra's bench in pretty decent comfort the seats themselves are also fairly soft yet quite supportive and the material quality is nice it's the same leather as in the front seats with nice stitching and you also get soft touch door cards here though i'm sure things will change between now and when this car goes on sale but i assume that means they'll only be getting better as for amenities, we have two fast charging USB-C ports, a pair of heated seats for each outboard passenger, which is lovely to see, and that's paired with a set of vents to keep you cool in the hot Australian summer. Also, we've got this fold down armrest here with two more cup holders and quite a clever little spot here to put your phone or an iPad or something when you're traveling in the back to keep you entertained on longer drives. Around the rear of the Solterra, it's quite a bold and interesting piece of design. Now you can let me know your thoughts down below and what you actually think of it, but I happen to really love these sort of fastback styling here with these little spoilers, which I'm sure add to this car's aero credentials. Nice little lip spoiler here and very classy looking LED taillights, which seem to incorporate some of the brand's heritage, that sort of crab claw design of the Forester brought into the 2022s with a new electric vehicle. You know it's an electric vehicle because we've got a badge here saying EV, but we also have have Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive badge back here as a hark back to Subaru's heritage. Now we pop this power tailgate, which is standard on this model we're looking at, though exact specifications have not yet been locked in for Australia, so we'll find out more about that closer to this car's launch here in the first half of next year. But under the boot floor, we don't have a spare tire as of yet. I understand that there is some thought of making concession for this vehicle to carry a spare tire. So it has that full on Subaru go anywhere kind of vibe about it. So you can go out into the outback and not get stranded without a spare tire, but all of that will be figured out into the future. What I can say is that this boot space is really big, broad, and has a very nice low load lift. So you're not gonna have to pick up heavy items a long way to drop them in there. It's also pretty easy to reach in and fold down the seats so there aren't any remote folding tabs. So that's the boot of the Solterra. So that's a brief look at the Subaru Solterra about six to nine months before it gets fully released here in Australia. What did you think of it? Let me know down below. Leave your opinion down there in the comments box. And if you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you could hit subscribe. Personally, I think with about 400 k's of range, 160 kilowatts of power and all wheel drive, the Subaru Solterra is a really interesting first effort. Of course, we'll have to wait to see how it drives, but it is a real new direction for the Subaru brand, especially inside where this cabin really moves the game on in an interesting new way with nice new materials and a cool new design, at least in my opinion. But as I said before, let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching Chasing Cars.